Hi, this is Jan Reardon, and I have the, the honor of representing the Jennifer Reardon Foundation. And Jennifer is my sister-in-law. And thankfully, we are able to carry on her legacy of being kind, loving, caring, and sharing, number one. But the four pillars of her um, foundation that I'd love to be able to focus in on for her and for all of the people that, that know and love her is the four things are women's empowerment, early childhood education, community vitality, which we are talking about today in a big way, and financial literacy. So anything that evol involves and, and revolves around those four pillars are um, areas of focus that my brother and our family focus in on and try to do, as I mentioned, keep Jen, Jen's legacy going. So today I have the absolute pleasure of being able to, I'm excited, I have my, I'm sporting my Jennifer Reardon sweatshirt just in case if I have to show off any pickleball moves for anybody, but <laughs> I have the pleasure of uh, meeting here with people from Vermont Senior Games. And what I have seen of Vermont Senior Games is just heartwarming to see people in their 90s that do circles around me, and I think I've been active my whole life and to to know that you can have that quality of life into you know a hundred years of age in Vermont with so much beauty is heartwarming so Kevin I just want to thank you for being here Betsy sure. thank you for being here we'll talk a little bit more about your roles and what you're doing with the community through um, Vermont Senior Games but I just wanted to start by welcoming you, thanking you both for being here. And perhaps we can start with you, Kevin, just sure. giving us a little background on when you became involved with Vermont Senior Games and a little bit of the history on the games themselves, when that began and, and how things have evolved. Okay. Okay. Uh, again, my name's Kevin Pleat. I'm the present president of the Vermont Senior Games. Congratulations. And I have a nice board uh, that's very active. Um, I've been involved probably more than 10 years. I started as an official. I was a middle school teacher and coach of track, and they needed somebody to run the discus at the That's how it all began. That's what I was games. wondering, how it all Barb began. Barb Jordan, who was a Springfield oh, College grad. Oh, yes. And we're a Springfield College grad. And I heard that you grad, went back to college days. <laughs> yes, that's beautiful. So I'd get a group, and we'd come every year. And, uh, and where would, like, where are the venues that you rely on for different activities? Sure. Um, we offer 14 different events. And you're in charge of events, Betsy, right? Okay. Um, everything With from, a group. from pickleball to running to track to swimming to cycling to power walking. Um, so tennis? Tennis is, a, is one of our bigger sports. Has tennis strong even with pickleball doing all that it's doing that, that has held its own? This year we've had, we had a tremendous uh, turnout. We were actually at the Bridges up in Waitsfield. Wonderful, yes. So one of the things we like to do is actually move our venues around the Different state. Different communities. Uh, That's and that makes people sense. think we're Chittenden County centric, right? And only a third of our events are in Chittenden Interesting. County. Interesting. I wouldn't have I mean, known. You go that everything from from out. Springfield to Castleton to Rutland Wonderful. to Middlebury to Montpelier. Um, Which is great really to hear because, around. unfortunately, you hear from people throughout the state that everything happens in Chittenden County. Yeah. And it's so nice to know that such an organization as this that is so beneficial for the community is throughout the state. And we also have increased um, our participation, not only in numbers, but in where they're coming from. Wonderful. I mean, and what it are used the numbers? to be like 60 different towns were represented okay. in a certain year at Vermont Senior Games. This year it was over 120. So over half so, of the oh. towns send some kind of representation to, to the games. That is um, absolutely that, wonderful for Vermont. That's being the reach that we want. Right, exactly, and that you have accomplished. Yeah, still accomplishing. Yes. There's 252 oh, yeah. towns in Vermont. Now so, that Essex is <laughs> a city. I added, know. I had to come to in the, from the city the today. Role. It used to be 251 Club, right? <laughs> You're now right. it's got to they got to change right. everything. That's to right. That's right. All those patches, all those things. Yeah. Right. So obviously you're year round you're going strong is there such a thing as a peak season for you sure uh i'll let betsy speak good a we'll talk about the, the events event, betsy and thank the you season, for sure thanks it's great to be here the season is pretty much spring summer fall right so in the winter we're planning for next year's event okay i see which you would think would happen pretty quickly but it always takes us two or three months to get everything confirmed and of course especially with moving venues and things like that throughout the state that's ongoing yep Good. and we partner with parks and rec departments we partner with the usta for tennis makes sense which is sure. giant it just you know they have a whole contact list 
And so we work together with a lot of different groups to make it all happen. And I was wondering, as far as from the funding side of, of things, how do you get donations? I know you have great sponsorships that you know have been on board, but where does the money <coughs> come from? a couple different ways. We have two major affiliates and sponsors, and one is the National Senior Games itself. Wonderful. Which doesn't provide us nationally financing, but all the a organizational lot of great exposure piece. And, and then the other piece is the Vermont uh, Governor's Council on sport and fitness. Of course, right. Um, and they're, we're sort of an, actually started as an umbrella under them, and we're still tied to them, um, but we're more of a separate entity. Right. And so what kind of a budget does that represent? Like, what are you looking for or in need of, or what you know, does the budget look like as far as what the expenses are over the course of a year with all of these new events? Right. We, uh, we do require a registration fee. Right. Instead of a membership. And does so that if you're sustain playing in the golf the, the programs? Uh, it covers about half of our okay. operating Wonderful. costs. Vermont uh, Governor's Council also will kick in a Fantastic. large piece of that. Um, and then the rest is right. Vermont Blue is a big sponsor, which is, is uh, AARP, wonderful. AARP, Hall oh, Communications. Fantastic. And we're looking at, Hall uh, Communications is great. Yeah. Yeah. Anything with the community, they are all about it. They really are. We really appreciate our uh, association with Dan Dubonnet and yes, that whole Yes, definitely. Group. Yeah, yeah, they are a wonderful group. They've been there's a lot of history there. They've been around yeah. for a lot of changes in our community. Yeah. And now that things, you know, continue to grow like this, it's just so nice. What I love about this show in general is we get to talk about all the good things that are going on. Because, I mean, when you watch the news, regardless of what state you're in, it, it, there's so much negativity. And you can always dwell on all the things that are going wrong and all the things that you wish you could change. But here we are in such a healthy environment talking about wonderful things. And, and many states, you know, have really stepped up and they're doing so many more things whether it is about community vitality or just in general what their focus is to just try to get past all the, the bad and the, the terrible things that are going on with, you know, drugs and just, I mean, it's heartbreaking when you hear some of the stories and the sadness that goes on within families. And to see something like this where we can truly get, you know, that vibrancy back into the community, it, even for children to see that this is going on just helps the future so much. Our challenge really was during covid I and can only you're imagine. Losing a couple couple seasons of sure, uh, and events. then to get that momentum going again. But you picked up quickly. It seems uh, like we from were also also one of the only New England states that hosted some games during so that time. So if we could hold them outdoors, like swimming, you still did, or track and field, uh, we or <clears throat> tennis could be an outdoor sport, and we did it that year outdoors. Um, that helps a lot. Whatever just to was keep, capable right. of doing, one, it kept our name out there, and two, it offered Good. an That's avenue brilliant. for people to get out. Right. It would have been easy uh, to just back off, so that was really right. smart just to keep that momentum going at some degree. People and were so happy. Oh, oh I they know. Were so That's happy. Why I, the only good thing about the pandemic was just that. Once people could get out, there was this, I wish it would still feel that way. It does for me. I'm still, I look around, I was like, I'm just so thankful to be out here with people instead of everybody being stuck at home, and especially that senior community, a lot of people are alone yeah. and then they they don't have anybody to talk to and it can really deteriorate things very quickly right so I mean this is like the extreme of that which is great yeah. so what's the first so, event coming up in 23 probably swimming and okay. we've gone back and forth with swimming from it's usually been indoors it was at the edge in Williston for yes. so many years yes which was great it's it's really nice when we partner with a master's program because oh, we introduce new people exactly and, to and the their event connections. And yes, your games and so we. But we were thankful that Essex Parks and Recreation, with their outdoor pool, took us on the last couple wonderful. of years. And that's a nice facility. It's a great yeah, facility. It really is. Wonderful yeah. staff. Yeah. Yeah, very much so. They were wonderful. And the one of the nice things about swimming is the youth teams usually serve as timers. Oh, I love and it. And the masters join in and. It is so fun. That model is the those best. Young kids oh. cheering on the eighty-nine-year-old. Exactly. Right. You, know, you know, so much for thinking somebody's old and not able to do anything. They're probably. I mean, that's inspirational. Oh, totally. for anybody. And you know, you know, someone can be a lap behind, and it doesn't. matter. Oh, it doesn't matter. They're in the water. They're in the water. <laughs> and they're, and the they're kids moving. Are just <laughs> yeah. all over it. It's really nice. Good. So that's what your first real focus will be as far as swimming. And then, do, well, I'm sure you have so many things going on at the same time. Track and we field have a couple is each, usually each month, early in generally. the year. Also, that's in June. 
Um, so, so how many participants in, in track and field events? Uh, it can be anywhere from 70 to 95. Wonderful. Depending on the year. And where will track and field be held this in 23? Uh, we're finalizing Burlington High School. Wonderful. Which has oh. ho hosted us for the last. Yes, and their outdoor three, facilities, years. you know, thankfully are intact yep. and everything is, is, that's a nice track and everything over and there. Is uh, we have a lot of support from not only the teams, but the coaches too in the area. Fantastic. Um, several of the high school coaches come and, and will work. I uh, didn't realize that, which is fabulous. Yep. Uh, that's what I love you about know, I was, Vermont. You were talking about the good things and I was thinking about just getting together today and a big part of a healthy society is people contributing in ways beyond their work and volunteering and Truth is, there's so much of that going on. That is it's just no. really nice to highlight. Bring it out. That's exactly What's my point, going Betsy. On? Right. I mean, That's why I thought, oh, it would be wonderful to be able to have you here representing Vermont Senior Games because it is community vitality at its finest, and a lot of people aren't aware of so many of the things. And you talk about volunteer opportunities. When you volunteer, if people don't realize how good it feels. You know, oh, and, yeah. and it's addicting. I mean, it's so nice to, to be a part of that. And I, again, I think those opportunities have to present themselves to somebody, and then they realize it can open up a whole new world, new friendships, and on and on. Yeah, and it does. Oh, absolutely. And, and one year at our track and field event, we had athletes from 12 states. Our events are all open to athletes from other states. So typically people are from other states in, in all the different events well, or is it certain sports? Few. It's um, mostly Vermonters. Right. But there are people from other states and there are people who are doing a national games in every single state in the country. That's their, That's goal. their goal. Yes, <laughs> of course. And, and, and you talked about the, it felt like the Olympics. The national, every other year, our state event is a qualifier for the national games. Right. And the national games are held in different places around the state, around the country. And and we have 12 to 14,000 athletes <sighs> attending. So this is an opportunity to compete at a high level, at a very right. high level of right. competition. And that level that you provide and continues on throughout, you know, other states, that professionalism is so wonderful to have as we get older and know that there's that there's so much caring and compassion and structure for events that we are a part of. You know, instead of it's not like, you know, years ago where you just kind of could throw something together and have fun. This is, you know, that the organized part of it allows you to really be competitive and feel good about what you can, your goals and what you can do next year and other opportunities that exist. So it just, it sounds like there's a chance for people to, you have a lot of athletes that go with a few different events. Well, uh, we do. Sports, uh, or is it typically people that stick with, I'm a pickleball player? No, um, for the most part, they're, for the national level, yes. they're stuck the to national. their, That's their sport. There's one or two sports. Um, some cycling, some swimming, some triathlon athletes will cross. Over into some swimming and the, things like that. Into both. Right. Um, and they've done very well. Vermont will typically send 65 to 75 athletes to the nationals or actually go great representation most of them, mm -hmm. most of them and it's all and they're competitive i mean i've seen the, high, the headlines yeah right. we're we i we're think we right got 20 there. 20 golds uh, for such a small state i mean we have probably as many people in the whole state as some people have in their city oh absolutely. i mean you think about albuquerque i mean there are a million people we don't even have that in the entire state right. and then we're out there you know representing for pickleball and everything is is just incredible the, as far as the competition so I have to put in a word for one of our board members. Please do. And this is Flo Myler. Oh, Flo yes. just recently uh, was the Masters Go with the flow. Track, oh. and, track and Field Athlete of the Year. And they presented her that down in Orlando. Okay, and only because we're here talking to you, I can ask this, but how old is she? Uh, in her, she I, I want to tell a little bit of a story. 80s. Okay. 87. 87. I thought so. But I she just took, heard her she, name forever. She took up track at 65. That's what I remember hearing. How and remarkable. So what had she done prior to that? Was she always uh, active? Tennis. Oh, tennis. okay. She was a tennis player. She was actually a water skier down in Cypress Gardens as a youth with her husband. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, the people that stack on top. And yes, the, yes. That was Flo. <laughs> she grew up on a dairy farm, didn't she? Yeah, Flo? over in Plattsburgh area. Um, but, I mean, a wonderful spokesperson, Ambassador. willing to do everything. Oh. And the athletes that come in, like 
I was at the track this year officiating, and of course, Flo will do 10 different events at 87 years yeah, old. Yeah, exactly. Um, but she's also more than willing to help any athlete try a different event. Uh, Isn't same that same thing that, to have, that Barb Jordan right. did for her, she does for everybody else and yeah. continues and to do it. And that's the beauty it. Whether of, it's pole vaulting right. at 87 or <laughs> oh, javelin. Goodness. And it said, you've never thrown a javelin? Come here, I'll, I'll show you how it's done. <laughs> what an opportunity, though. Oh, yeah. And life-altering. I mean, it truly is. Yeah. I think about you know the fact, as I mentioned, I'd really love to get involved, and I'm certainly not going to be, you know, Paul Flo, <laughs> you know, with the pole vaulting, but I, I still, just to have that camaraderie yeah. and, and the fun that comes with the competition and, you know, trying new things at this age, you kind of think, oh, I do what I do and this is it. Well, no, I mean, there's all sorts of opportunities yeah. her, through her your organization. Her theory is it's never too late. And she, uh, she, things, she lives it. Do it. To, yeah. Right. Yeah, she's, she's walking proof that that can right. be done. She won more medals at the National Senior Games than any other athlete in the con of the 12,000 athletes or 14,000 athletes. Is, I mean, it just gives me yeah. chills. I mean, it's such a beautiful life. Yeah. What an example. She works hard. Oh, she, she works yeah. out yes. six days a week. Right. So it's not, it's it not does, easy. It's not as though not, she just shows up for any event, exactly. that's for sure. And, that, and that's Flo's thing. She, she likes doing that. We have other senior athletes that have never tried the javelin. <laughs> And, you know, haven't been active for 30 years since their high school or oh, college my, days or whatever. Oh, and good for whatever. them. Just, yeah. Uh, or a friend just asked them to compete. Sure. So they're going to show up and they, they try it. But our uh, eligibility is 50 and up. Okay. And then when they do their competitions, it's within your age range. So 50 to 54 is an age group. Okay. And is it always five-year increments? 55 to 59. Right. So it's right. five years all the way up through. Great, uh, and that's good too. They, it gives you, you know, certainly a great chance. It's not like a, I mean, I'll, can you remember like when you're 50, you're thinking that you're so old, but I mean, a 50 competing, unless if it's flow, competing with a 75 year old might be, you know, a little uh, right. challenging, but to know that you truly that's have those age groups versus even 10 year awards. span right. helps a lot. Right. But how exciting, I, I mean, what are the two of you involved in for the actual sports? Do you get a chance to participate in anything as well as uh, run the show? I, I've done tennis, track and field, and golf. Oh, wonderful. So in golf, so again, that kind of rotates throughout the state? Different uh, we courses, try to or? pick, it has been, um, we try and pick uh, a course that we can stay for two, three, four years. That um, makes sense. So people sort of get used get to, to know it. The course. We were at Neshaby and they were very generous and it's a beautiful course. So and beautiful. Last year we were at Middlebury um, and the head pro, uh, his kids are actually national level golfers. quality golfers. That's impressive. Um, and will it be back at Middlebury? It'll be back at Middlebury. Wonderful. Um, and will you be, are you going to be both. participating? Oh, good, good, good. Then your director. Game, we have a sport coordinator for each sport. Yes. And Kevin is our golf sport coordinator. And, and the and sport grown has grown tremendously. We went from a lot. 11, 12 when I first entered it to we had 35 oh, last time. Oh, that's fabulous. And, and that's only we'll going better. to obviously continue to grow because, right. you know, golfing, it tends to, you know, there are a lot of people, thankfully, that are 50 and above that and play Middle a lot Barry of golf. And is a great experience. I mean, there are oh, venues. Oh, yes. We try and pick venues, one for the quality of the uh, facility, but also the quality of the, the Look, volunteers sh and oh, the people good that point. are involved. Right. Um, it would be nice to move it around every year. Um, but it's also very hard to, oh, to, to have that continuity and create a right. real high quality event. Right. And all the other moving parts about, you know, somebody traveling to that area, just right. the accommodations and everything, if they are coming, coming from another from state. state. Right. right. I mean, we had a guy from Texas. We had probably three, four other states represented in golf. That is just fabulous. I had no idea that it went out, you know, drew from outside the state. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that. That's exciting. It's the only pretty. one that really draws big from out of state is basketball. So that sort of skews our out-of-state numbers. Right, right. Um, and it's also a team event. The, yes. If you take that out, it's probably less than 10% of But still, I mean, just the fact that that exists and that that, you know, can be done is is helpful for the exposure for the state of Vermont. And Vermonters can go to New Hampshire or Massachusetts or New and York. And is there a lot of that? A lot of the athletes that you know do yes. travel? Yes. I mean, if I wanted to qualify in track and field and I was busy the weekend they had it at Burlington, I can go to New Hampshire or Mass 
qualify at their state. Wonderful. And Do the, all the other states pieces, have? Oh, uh, go ahead, Kevin. Is that if a New Hampshire guy comes in Vermont and he finishes higher than me in golf, he gets to qualify for New Hampshire, but he doesn't display to displace a Vermonter in qualifying for nationals. Oh, I see. So they would go down through and. It's a great plan. Yeah. That I think. Absolutely, and I didn't realize till just now. Like the schedule here would be good if we could yeah. just show this because it. I or mean, the sports are that this yes. is an old schedule, but it's. But still, like, same like idea. racquetball, I didn't know. Is that still? We do popular? that, and uh, it's not real popular. Maybe but that's there's a whole group that. <laughs> And yeah, we do that in Hampshire, combination <laughs> with New Hampshire. Oh, interesting. But have, is that River uh, Valley Club? Do you go there? Or? I don't we remember where they host it. We go wherever the down. New Hampshire Senior Games is. Oh, I see. And honestly, okay. I'm not even sure where it was I last thought it was year. Manchester. Right. In that area. It's beautiful. Yeah. But so basketball, table tennis, power walk, cornhole. Is that popular? We tried cornhole yeah. twice Did, last year and the year before. Yeah, not so much. And we didn't get enough to really run a tournament. No, good try on that approach, one. There are way more than 14 events run at the national level. If a group comes to us and they really want us to get involved with offering a new sport, we'll try it. totally work with them. We tried with cornhole for a couple of sure. years. And you know, our sense is if there's not a real interest and a real draw, You have a lot of other things you could be focused we're, on, we're right. With bowling no and archery at different points, um, some of the more individual sports. That bowling used to be pretty con big. Yeah. And it's funny, I was just talking to somebody, a little plug here for spare time with the Provost yeah. family, has done an amazing job over there as far as expanding, but they are book solid with leagues every night. I mean, they're, yeah. it's a big bowling right. community. It is I, right. And that, it's a funny, I mean, that sport goes back, you know, 70 years for being, you know, like a fun thing to do. Here it still is all these years later is impressive, you know? It really is because so many other sports, as we know, they come and go. So Sadly, it, there's fewer bowling facilities. Yes. So I know. I'm sure they're right there. Because I know I was involved in Special Olympics for a while, and that bowling was a huge uh, piece of that. And then uh, so many of the, um, I know they don't like to call them bowling centers, but right. bowling alleys or whatever. But I mean, now they it's more of an experience, but there are not that many, you're right. So many closed during, you know, during the, the last 50 years or so. A lot of, you know, them have come and gone. But it's a great game. It's a oh, great it sport. is. It's and a like, lot of fun. It, it, it's very yeah, social. Exactly. I mean, it hits all the buttons. It just, uh, so you think we, that we might didn't come get a back great turnout. Point? For I think that. there's Absolutely. bowling at the national level. There is. Yeah. Oh, um, and I think there might be candle pin and ten pin. Interesting. Yeah. Oh, candle pin. I've heard <coughs> that in a long time. All those people in Maine, you know. <laughs> That's right. Or it used yeah. to be down yes. at the at the Y back in the day where they have candle set, pin. Set your own pins up. Down yeah. down in the basement. <laughs> They have candle pin at the St. John's Club? Uh, or they had it at uh, yeah, Ethan Allen Ethan Club. Ethan Allen Club. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was popular. I don't, I've never done that. Have you? I have. Oh. Uh, Massachusetts, they used to have them. Oh, Small oh. ball. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chuck them. So yeah. what's your favorite sport, Betsy? Oh, I don't compete in any sports. No. And it's funny. I just got involved with this. You know, my background is in recreation. Exactly. You're so active. It started in the 80s. It used to be a one-day event. Castleton State University. Speaking of history. Yeah. Unbel <laughs> yes, thank you. Carol that is Hartshorn was a prof there, and she had her students, her admin students, did this as part of their it, curriculum. Oh, what a great um, activity. All these different sports were happening. The governor would come. There'd be 250 athletes, and it was a one-day deal. So I've been doing that for since the 80s, late 80s. Uh, so you have seen a lot of changes. I was doing... Horseshoes was my specialty oh. at <laughs> at the senior games. And first night I was going down to officiate horseshoes. I had to look it up. I had no idea. <laughs> right. And I got down there, and they're shooting more than 50% ringers. I mean, a lot of I our can't wait to witness went, all of this. Went yes. to Arizona and Florida for the summers, and then they came back for the winters, and then they came back and they would play. And they totally knew how to play horseshoes. So I had to up my game. And Woo. <laughs> it was it was just watching great. those YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same people come back every year. We have three guys that come from Montreal. Oh, of course, beautiful. for two years they couldn't come. One of them was in his nineties. Right. <laughs> yep. Oh. And it was so nice to see them. It's like, oh you're oh, back. You're exactly. Back. Yeah. It's like a family. I yeah. mean just one great big family, which is, you know, such a gift. Yeah. To be able to have it thriving 
you know, in many states, but obviously a little partial to Vermont here mm -hmm. in the sense of the percentage of people that are involved. And I know we have a large senior population, but for years and years, it wasn't as active as it obviously can be and is now. Well, it's interesting because in 19, in 2010 or 2009, I received a survey from the folks who were running senior games. So it's, we're talking 2010. They had been running them since, since 80, the 83? 80, 80, 1983, yeah. right? Yeah. So they had been running them for 40 years. And the survey was, we're getting real tired. <laughs> we're thinking this isn't relevant And anymore. bless them truly for having oh, been involved right. for that long to build that foundation. 40 years. <sighs> but, but we're thinking that it's not really that important anymore and we should just let it go by. Sure, oh side. that. And I remember seeing that and thinking, how can that be? Because people are so much more active than they were 40 years ago. Exactly. And Don Shellerin came to town from Delaware. Yes, yes, He had yes, been sir. running the senior games in Delaware. I remember. And I ended up at the Charlotte Senior Center where my friend was the director for lunch and to talk about senior games and and Don was there with his wife. And after lunch, he said, well, I'll get involved with this and I'll do this if you do this. And that's how I got oh, back yeah. involved in 2010. And we, the board was Rutland based at that point. And so we worked with them and they were all like, you want to do this? This is fabulous. So what a turning point though. How pivotal yeah, is it? It could have gone away. It could have been gone away in 2010. Oh, that, that's heartwarming yeah. truly. And thank you both i mean we're coming and there's an still opportunities soon, within that you know you look at the usta oh exactly and some of those things but that's not necessarily for everybody either uh, where i think the senior games really caters towards and the whole range exactly. not just the competitive and, piece right and people like Flo that piece. are willing to help some newbie come right in who hasn't you know been active in 30 or 40 years you can't find that just anywhere i mean that, that feeling of being welcome and, you know, accepted and, again, kind, loving, caring, sharing. It's all about, you know, thriving in a community. And what better way than what it does for you? I mean, the benefits are endless, as we know. Right. And, and again, as I mentioned, what a gift to be our, able to Our have. motto is really fun, fitness, and fellowship. Oh, I love um, it. I love it. Yeah. So not even the competition. Exactly. In terms I mean, of our motto. Sure. And yet we have very elite athletes. Oh, absolutely. But everyone's welcome. Right. So nobody would feel as though I'm not good enough for that by any means. Right. Right. Well, we are going to wrap up here in a minute, which I can't okay. believe it just flies by. But is there anything <laughs> in particular that you just want to be able to mention? Any call outs? I mean, for volunteers, perhaps? Or would we they go to the website? Use volunteers. Okay. And, and what is the website address? It's Spelled Vermont out. Seniorgames.org. Spelled all, okay, all lowercase doesn't matter. at the matter. bottom of your score, Perfect. screen. Perfect. Um, oh, there we go. There you go. Excellent. Who's that? That uh, is Bernie Berg. He's uh, in his 80s and playing tennis. Oh. Is Charlie Smith on the left. Uh, yes. Officiating long jump. Oh, my goodness. Uh, there's a sprints from the track and field that you see coming through at Burlington <laughs> High School. Oh. This is a tri triathlete that do very, very well on the national level. Uh, as well as the state level. Uh, Castleton is one of our partners for cycling and for basketball. Fabulous. And they're one of the ones that integrate well. the student work for the PE See, that, majors. that model is so perfect. And it's, whether it's, it's been yes. strong, it's good for them. Uh, this oh. was golf at Nesha B a couple Doesn't years ago. That look nice. Um, there's your pickleball. There that, it is. That could be you, yeah, Jan, could, Hopefully I'm going to be on the next year when we're sitting here. <laughs> I, I'd love to be able to say that that's me. <laughs> if you're registering for pickleball, register early. That's it's what I can imagine. It's our largest event. We had over 160 competitors. Oh, I love it. And, yeah. you know, many of them doing multiple events. It's three days. It's run at Letty Park and Colchester Airport Park. Right, I've seen Miller, Miller, Miller Center. Yeah, Center the Miller as well. Center. Yes, yep. I did look at the Miller Center. Has some drop-ins in January, yep. so I was going to oh, try yeah, that. Yeah. You so, can get a punch card too for that. That's what I was reading. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love it. And so people, as far as the competition at pickleball, they could just come in as themselves. They don't have to have a partner. They don't have to have a you know. For be... pickleball and for tennis, we have singles, doubles, doubles, and mixed doubles. Okay. So it's over three days, and so you can choose in pickleball. There are lots more double players than singles, yes. but we do have singles, both men and women singles, right. on the first day of the event. So in terms of shouting out, um, I really wanted to mention that 
exponentially our exposure has improved with Vermont Blue Advantage. Yes, mm -hmm. um, commercials Not only are good. the commercials, which is what you saw, but behind the scenes, financially, oh. uh, board members. What a collaboration. It, it's wonderful. Uh, oh. And How it's many a, it's a great board? fit. Uh, oh, 12. Question. Is that 12? Oh, yeah. that's, that's sizable. And it's, it's grown. Size. And we've had some athletes just volunteering and saying, you know, I'd like to be on the board. Which oh. is and that speaks volumes to the organization. And you don't have to be on the board. You can volunteer for your a sport or, event or something, or something else. like that. Uh, there's different ways to be involved. I'm well, I'm spreading the word. Find so a way. I, yeah, oh, I have a pretty big mouth, so I'm going to try <laughs> to get some people myself of those included. Ways, yes. yes, I so know I the. Oh, on your show. I'm so thankful that you know, I know it's a busy time of year for everybody, and I can't thank you enough for being here with and us. As our season kicks off, we'd love to come back and have an after oh, or two. Oh, abs absolutely. You can, you can pick that, your brain and think. Okay, absolutely. I would love that. We can get Maggie back here too. We need yeah, to, yeah. to hear Perfect. from her. Good. Well, again, thank you both so very much. And at least I know we'll be together again. Um, yes. You know, out probably at a Somewhere. different event and back here again as well. So awesome. Thank Thanks you. Thank you, Jane. Oh, my pleasure. It was a pleasure. Okay, thank you. Yeah.